Hello everyone! Today I'm setting up this beautiful, bountiful hydroponic growing system. It's very similar to an arrow garden, but at a much friendlier price. This is the Letpot LPHSE system with 12 growing pods. Here it is listed on Amazon for $108, but with a $20 coupon, so it's really just $88. Compared with a similar sized arrow garden for $159, this is a really good deal. Okay, let's see what comes in the box. Inside the Amazon packing box is a let pot box, and you can see it's a small design that would actually make a nice gift for someone. It has a carry handle and it's pretty lightweight. Okay, so right on top are some guides for the plant food and a user's manual for the system. The nutrient solution needs to be measured in two parts for the right amount of water. You can also use AeroGarden nutrient solution. That's just a one part mixture. Either way, I've had success with both. And then the user's manual has all the different parts to the system and instructions on how to set it up. But it's really easy to do. You almost don't need the instructions, but good to have. I'm not complaining. Okay, let's pull this baby out. And it's about the same size as my yogurt maker. Cute. This has the control buttons on the lid. This is also where the grow light is under the lid. This little piece covers where you can refill the unit with water. And the light really lifts up quite high. I remember with our first arrow garden, we couldn't raise the light up high enough. This one lifts up to almost 20 inches, which is enough for most anything I would want to grow in here. The light is a 24 watt full spectrum light with red, white, and blue LEDs. In veggie mode, all three colors are used. In fruit and flower mode, just the red and white lights are used. The lid has holes to plant up to 12 pods, but that's really too many plants for such a small space. I'll be planting lettuce in here, as you'll see in a bit, so I'm going to use six of the holes to grow six nice sized lettuce plants. You'll see how they will overtake this planter, so that's really more than enough plants for this if you're planting all at once. What you can do is plant in succession. So let's say you plant a new lettuce plant or two every week or so, then the lettuce will not all mature at the same time. And then that would make a lot more sense than what I did here. And if you do space out the planting over time, then you can definitely use all 12 pods so that you will have new plants starting up just when the more mature plants are ready to harvest. Make sense? This triangular piece here covers the fill hole, and this yellow button here is where you put the water level gauge. Here's the plant food, part A and part B. Then we have the plug for the water pump. The water pump is already installed at the bottom of the reservoir. I like that it's installed already. Some units that I've put together in the past give you the pump to install separately using suction cups to keep it down on the bottom and those never stay down, but this one will. Next are 12 growing pods. These are reusable and then 12 growing sponges to put the seeds into and these are really not reusable. You can buy more when you're finished with the first 12 or use Rockwell or cotton balls instead. Here's a pack of 60 refill sponges for around $15, but you really can use Rockwell, just cut it down to fit. On the back of the unit, there are two ports. One is for the wire coming out from the reservoir that you need to plug into the port labeled pump. And then the power cord gets plugged into the port labeled power. I'm going to plant six varieties of lettuce in here. Prizehead, Ruby Red, Oak Leaf, Black Seeded Simpson, Red Romaine, and Paris Island Koss. I did a review on all of these varieties in a previous video. You might want to check that out if you're curious about the differences between these varieties. They are very different in taste and texture, but we are salad lovers, so we love them all. So first I need to reconstitute the plant food. These have some powder or tablets in them. Mm -hmm. 
and I need to mix water into the A and B containers. And then I'll add 5 ml to a liter of water using this measuring cup. So let's mix up the two parts. And now I have here a bottle of RO water. Luckily, this has measurements in liters. It says three liters. If you're not in the United States, you're used to using liters as a measurement. But here in the US, we use ounces, quarts, and gallons. So it would be nice if the instructions were written for gallons instead of liters, or show both. But it's okay, this is three liters, so I need to add 15 ml to this, 15 of part A, and then 15 of part B. Here's some test tube looking thing, and I just realized it goes on here to measure the water level. Okay, time to pour the water. And that was three liters, so I mixed up another three liters and then filled the reservoir until the max line. Next, since I'm going to plant six lettuce plants, I put in six of the plastic pods and I tried to space them out evenly so that there would be room in between the plants. And then I put a grow sponge in each of the pods. After a few minutes, you can see the sponges are soaking up the water. It's important for the sponges to be wet so the seeds can germinate properly. Let's start by planting the ruby red in the front left pod. It's easier to take the sponge out of the pod and then drop the seeds in. I'm planting two seeds in each pod and if they both germinate, I'll have to thin it out, which means getting rid of one. You shouldn't have more than one plant growing in each pod. Okay, that's the ruby red. Next, here in the center left hole is going to be the prize head. And again, I dropped two seeds down in the sponge's hole. In the back left pod, I'm going to plant black seeded Simpson. And yes, the seeds are black. Two in each hole and that's done. Next is the back right. I'm going to plant oak leaf back there. Again, two seeds in each pod. Next is red romaine, and I'm going to plant up front here on the right. Again, two seeds in a pod. And then last, here all the way on the right, in the center, I'm going to plant the seeds for Paris Island Koss, also two seeds in a pod. All right, next we have the humidity domes. They give you 12 and it's good to use on the pods until the seeds germinate. It keeps the environment nice and humid, just right for germination. And now I realize they don't give you covers for the empty holes. And that bothers me a little bit since anything can fall into those holes. And also it lets light into the reservoir, which can cause algae to grow. Although the algae is generally not considered harmful, it's just not pleasing to look at. And anyway, I wish they gave covers for these holes. These are smaller holes next to the pod size holes. And those are if you want to stake your plants. You can put some rods in these holes to help stake the plants like tomatoes or anything vining that needs to be supported. Okay, let's go ahead and move this to its final resting place. Ooh, that doesn't sound so good. I moved the system to my living room and plugged it in and it's on veggie mode. So you can see all the LEDs are on, the red ones, the blue ones, and the white ones. Here on the top of the light are the controls and I kept accidentally pressing the buttons as I was adjusting the height of the light. So I'm not sure that's a good place to put the buttons. Now you can leave the unit like this and it will turn on for 18 hours and off for six hours from when you set it up. Or you can download the LetPot app and set the time from there. I did download the app and set it up that way, but I'm really not into apps so much. I like buttons I can press, not apps I have to program. So if you're like me, don't worry. 
just turn the unit on in the morning, say 7 o'clock, and then it will automatically turn off at 11 p.m. and on again the next morning at 7. No app needed. App or no app, the seeds are going to germinate, and if they're fresh seeds, that should happen quickly. Here we are on day five, and you can see some of the seeds have germinated, and the seedlings have popped their heads up. At this point, you can remove the humidity domes from the pods that have seedlings starting to come up, and then I realized I can use the domes to cover up the holes so that nothing drops into those empty holes. Those empty holes really bother me. The light can still get in, but at least nothing else will drop in there. So I have three pods that germinated and three a little behind, but they'll catch up soon. And they did. Just two days later, the remaining seeds have germinated and I can remove the humidity domes from them as well. This pod had both seeds germinate this is the prize head, so I'm going to pull the smaller of the two out. And back here, the oak leaf also had both seeds germinate, so one's got to go. And now I have two little microgreens here, and I think I'll eat them. Why not? Now it's day 10, and as you can see, all the pods have one seedling in each of them and they all seem to be doing just fine. And the water level looks like it's just about where it was when I set this up. Now it's day 15 and everything looks great. You can see a little red on the price head leaves and also here on the ruby red in the front, that's the black seeded Simpson. And here's the oak leaf, the red romaine, and the Paris Island Koss. Now it's day 19 and the leaves on some of these lettuce plants are shaping up nicely. This prize head is really pretty with its red frilly leaves and so is the ruby red. And the red romaine here in the front is also taking on a reddish tinge with very deep green leaves. It's so interesting to see these different lettuce varieties growing side by side. Just for kicks, I want to have a look at the roots, and I'm surprised to see that they are not very substantial, but that will change soon enough. I'm filming this now just two days later. This is day 21, and it's amazing to see how quickly these lettuce plants are growing each day. And the red color on these is just beautiful. All right, let's fast forward to day 26, and wow, look at this red romaine and in the back here, the oak leaf. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could harvest some of the leaves as needed, but because I'm making a video to document the growth, I don't want to trim this, but of course, if you're interested in growing this yourself, then take the opportunity to harvest the leaves along the way. You don't have to wait until they're fully grown to harvest. Just cut some of the outer leaves and enjoy. The rest of the lettuce will continue to grow, and meanwhile, you will begin to enjoy the fruits of your labor, although this really isn't very labor-intensive. And now it's three days later, day 29, and again, it's amazing how fast this lettuce grows. I'm tempted to harvest some of these beautiful-looking leaves, but for the sake of this video, I'm letting it grow without any trimming. But definitely, if you're growing this, make sure to enjoy some of the outer leaves as you need them. I noticed the water level has dropped significantly, which makes sense. These plants are drinking a lot of water. And here you can see how beautiful the roots look. It's the next day, and you can see when I lift the lid, that I really need to add some more water in here, but I love looking at these roots. I really didn't have to lift the lid. The water gauge shows pretty clearly that the water level is low. This lettuce took 30 days to get to this point, and I'm going to stop the video now because I'm ready to harvest this delicious bunch of lettuce. I can't wait to eat it. Next, I'm gonna plant some herbs in here and some more lettuce and probably some basil. This is really a fun little machine and if you time the planting right, you can have a nice harvest of lettuce to enjoy every week.